Hayam Akavan is an international lawyer and a professor at McGill University. He has also served as a UN prosecutor and a member of the Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague. He's also a founder of the Iran Human Rights Documentation Center. He spoke to us from London. Iran's abysmal human rights record is documented by your organization and others. How would you describe the atmosphere in the country now, and has it changed at all? Unfortunately not. With the election of uh, President Rouhani and the conclusion of the um, nuclear uh, uh, deal uh, in Vienna in 2015, there were promises of uh, greater prosperity after the lifting of crippling sanctions. There were promises of uh, greater uh, liberties and improvement in the human rights situation. And unfortunately, that, that has not materialized. And the protests that began on December 28th of last year, um, I think, were an unprecedented expression of widespread frustration and, and anger. Um, at the uh, extreme uh, corruption, uh, uh, unemployment, uh, rising prices, um, the problem of um, uh, desertification, um, uh, in addition to all the other concerns regarding repression of political freedoms, uh, mandatory veiling of women, and, and so on and so forth. And what's significant is that the thousands which poured out into the, in the, to the streets of towns and villages and cities across the country weren't the urban middle classes, but many of them were the rural and urban working classes, which were really the foundation of the uh, Islamic revolution. And I think that this has created a crisis of legitimacy uh, for the regime. When you talk about a crisis of legitimacy, they may raise the possibility of a referendum, but how is that crisis manifesting itself within the regime? Well, within the regime itself, there has been a steady fragmentation of power um, as uh, different groups, uh, both between the hardliners uh, and the so-called reformists, and then within those factions as well, um, as we become increasingly aware that Iran is more a kleptocracy than a theocracy, the rampant corruption uh, and power struggles, much of which is um, over who can steal the oil wealth of the country, um, have, have really created an internal political crisis as well. So it's not just the crisis of legitimacy with the outpouring of public anger, um, but also within the regime itself, the power structures are, are, are fragmented, um, so there are a lot of very uh, troubling signs. So uh, with the deadline approaching now for Trump's decision on, on sanctions, what do you think needs to happen? Well, we have to remember that the nuclear deal was an alternative to war, uh, and it was an alternative to crippling sanctions, which hurt a lot of ordinary Iranians. Um, so whether the nuclear deal needs to be modified or not, I think that uh, a, a diplomatic solution is certainly preferable uh, to an escalation of tensions uh, leading to war, which would have a catastrophic effect, not only for the Iranian people, but for the security of the entire region. Uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, Iranian regime has to um, listen uh, to the widespread uh, frustration and dissatisfaction and call for radical change in order to allow for a nonviolent um, democratic transformation um, within Iran. Do you know, you're not the only one talking, obviously, about sort of the idea of a dem democratic transformation in, in Iran, but it just sounds uh, to be overly optimistic to me? Well, um, I was a student activist during the days of apartheid in South Africa, Augusto Pinochet in Chile, and uh, even during the days of the Soviet Union. And most people would have ridiculed the idea uh, that those regimes would one day come to an end. And Iran has all the ingredients, a vibrant um, civil society, highly educated population, uh, a, a middle class with certain social and economic expectations, a cosmopolitan 
savvy uh, youthful population, fragmentation of power within the regime. So all the ingredients are there for the transformation of Iran. The question is, how can it be managed so that one can avoid uh, a violent disintegration? And there is increasing chaos and lawlessness uh, in Iran, uh, which is a very troubling sign. We shouldn't forget that in Syria, uh, one of the ingredients that led to the uprising in, in, and the civil war in 2011 was uh, the massive flight of um, farmers, uh, about a million, who had to leave their uh, farms uh, for the cities because of uh, a, a prolonged drought. Um, so there are a lot of climatic and social factors in Iran which should be a cause for serious concern and all the efforts of the international community now should be to help empower the Iranian people to achieve a, a peaceful transformation uh, of structures that are, are failing the Iranian people and are, that are simply not sustainable. And many people within the government itself understand that things cannot uh, continue. I thank you very much for your expertise and insight on this. Thank you very much.